Hey, what up, everybody? It is your boy, BQ. This is the Impact Lounge checking in. And with this podcast episode, we're going to talk about gut check episodes one and two. This is a good step in the right direction for Impact Plus and the programming on that app. I've been very critical, very critical about Impact Plus, the way it's promoted, the way it's delivered. And the kind of content that Impact Wrestling prioritizes on that app. And what they find to be of the most importance to them. Now, ever since it's been the Global Wrestling Network, up to now, it has really seemed like the focus for them is the TNA library. Which is great and all, but I think should be a bonus. Now, when I used to subscribe to the WWE Network once upon a time, yeah, the library, I definitely watched the library. Don't get me wrong. But the majority of the time that I spent watching was for original programming. Even if it was, you know, top 10 countdowns, like top 10 greatest tag team or something like that. So I really think... You know, per, you know, creating content for the Impact Plus app is not as difficult as it needs to be. You can do a very uh, inexpensive, and I think the majority of the current Impact Wrestling fans care about the current Impact Wrestling product and the future of Impact. I think a lot of the people who like the old TNA stuff. I mean, a majority of those people are gone and it seems like they're keep, you know, they want to keep bring, they're trying to get those people to come back by shoving that content down your throat instead of this is what we're doing right now. This is what our talent is doing right now and what they can do in the future of the company. And it seems like they really are really stuck in the past. And, you know, this TNA, no place like homes coming out and coming up and yes, people are excited for it. But they're more concerned with this throwback show with Shark Boy coming out and Disco. They're more concerned with that than the lockdown show or just whatever they got going on right now. So this gut check stuff, I think, is a really good step in the right direction. They had Global Forge not long ago, if you remember that, and it was very poorly executed. To the point that no one knew anything about the people on TV. I mean, in the competition. We didn't connect to them. The clips were very, very short. And we didn't even know the names of the competitors for the most part. Unless you were familiar with who those guys were on the indies. And Rohit Raju won that. Which was a good selection. Now with Gut Check, it's a step in the right direction. Because they're teasing us on TV and then saying you can watch the whole episode on impact plus these episodes. If you haven't watched them, they're 15 minutes long. They're not, I wouldn't say they're binge watchable. I probably wouldn't sit there and watch several of them in a row, but they're easy watches. They're 15 minutes goes by fairly fast. And it's interesting, you know, to see that side of Johnny Bravo, the Scott and commentary is a little off to me. I, I don't know what it what it is exactly. Uh, I think it's because it comes off kind of scripted, you know, instead of him just kind of talking, just just like I'm doing right now. I'm not reading a script to you. I just have a microphone in front of me and I'm talking to you. I don't think it comes off like that, but it's enjoyable. So if you haven't watched them, I would watch them. And as I said. With Global Forge, we didn't really get an opportunity to learn the wrestlers. With this, we're getting a little bit more, a little, little deeper into them just because the episodes are longer. We're getting familiar with what their names are and what they bring to the table. From what I'm understanding, this is basically 
they basically held a tryout, and these were the finalists. These were the ones that they saw something in. We've got Akbar Ali, Clayton Gaines. He's got a really great look. I want to say he has been on an Impact Plus show. I want to say it was the uh, Ohio one. Could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure he's been on Impact Plus. Uh, Tyler Turva, he's a really he sounds like he's a really good promo. I am pretty sure he's been on Impact Plus as well. I'm pretty sure. You guys can correct me in the comments. There's Shogun, Leonis Khan, Maximus Khan, and Shotgun Tony Gunn. So, um, and, and the Khan brothers are, I guess, a tag team called King's Ransom. So based off the first couple episodes, if I had to come up with someone uh, who I think is going to win this thing, I actually think it's going to be one of the Khan brothers. And then I'll say Tyler Turva has a, the next best chance. So with these episodes, though, there is a little bit of reality show drama to it. But it's not it's not scripted drama. It's very much in the moment of what's going on. So it starts off, Scott and Moore introduces the show, what it's about, what they're looking for, saying that he wishes that he, when he was coming up in, in wrestling, he wishes he had the opportunity that Gut Check provides. Now with this current Gut Check, I know what we're talking, it's, it's 15 minutes long, but I still compare it more to the early WWE Tough Enough stuff. If you saw the last Tub Enough series, it was almost a, I don't want to say it was a comedy show. It was, it was very, uh, very PG. <laughs> it definitely wasn't the Stone Cold product. I connect to this style of training. Obviously, I've been in the military 17 years. And a lot of that time, I was, I was an instructor. I was a what's called a ground combat instructor to where we trained, uh, trained troops for combat basically. And I was a combatives instructor, just combatives level one. So, uh, you know, nothing crazy, but you know, I had to go through a combatives course. Uh, it was a week. I want to say it was about a week long and with basically, uh, trained, MMA fighters who were also in the military. They're the ones who taught it. So this, this, you know, um, this scenario, this, 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 um, presentation of the product, you know, having guys in the ring hands, hands behind your back, you know, yes, sir. That's something I connect with because I've been on both sides of it. I've been on the, the student side and I've been on the instructor side. So for that reason, I really, I really like this. Um, I also trained um, when I was in Iraq. I trained, you know, Iraqis out there as well, who were supposed to like, you know, take over for the United States troops or whatever. So I connect with this, and I love it. They start off doing push-ups. We're seeing, you know, training, basic, just basic training, calisthenics. The form's a little off on the push-ups, but you know, I'm gonna assume they've been. Um, you know, doing sets of maybe they're doing burpees between or, or something. Scott says that Shogun struggled on day one. What stands out to me with the guys on this show is that they actually look like wrestlers. They look like pro wrestlers. They're not, they're, they're bigger guys. They're not, you know, X division dudes. They're not little dudes. They're not skinny dudes. Um, they look like wrestlers. And I would say, a majority of them look, they come off like they have that look. But they said Shogun struggled since day one. But they he lost 50 pounds to get ready for this. So I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar with the dude. I don't know if he's someone who's has a history of being out of shape or if he's just a big guy, a big man, you know, his style of wrestling. But he cut some weight for, you know, for obvious reasons. He talks about... The King's Ransom, how they're a tag team. Uh, Leonis Khan and Maximus Khan, they're a tag team, but here only one person can win. But does it give them an advantage because they can wrestle each other? They they know each other. Will having someone you've been wrestling with probably since day one, since they probably broke in together, um, 
will that cause will that be an advantage so johnny bravo is the trainer on the show he says he's been doing this for near 25 years he's running drills he lets him know that tv is a lot different than an independent show you know you've you heard at one point he's yelling at him like yelling at one one of them like do you want to be on tv or do you want to be an indie guy for the rest of your life he says that Scott Scott Demore says that, that Johnny Bravo sees issues in the basics, and you can see that in these first two episodes, which is something I really appreciate. And I'm going to be having Johnny Bravo on the podcast soon. Uh, as soon as gut check is done, you know we're gonna we're gonna hook up and and do this. And I, I really want to get deeper into gut check and what he saw. But you can you can tell he sees the basics. He he's yelling um, at was, I believe it was Clayton Gaines about getting up he wasn't getting up properly he wasn't rolling over to the right side and he's like how do you not get up the right way it's fun just seeing pe- peeling back the curtain and seeing we, we hear about you know people going to wrestling school we hear about the performance center but we don't really see you know really what goes on behind the scenes so one thing that had kind of stood out in the episode is that they're having issues with safety and Bupinder Singh is he makes an appearance here. And I'm glad he did because we're watching the Impact product and we see Bupinder Singh once. Uh, I think he's done some explosion shows. They almost tease like he's a member of the Daisy, Daisy Hit Squad, which he was one of the initial members of the Daisy Hit Squad when they announced them for the very first time. So he's he has been on screen with Gama, Gama Singh once, but... We're sitting here, we see this dude who looks like a million bucks, and we're like, is he a part of the roster? What's going on here? And that's, I talk about it all the time on on my podcast, that the disconnect that Impact has with presenting information to the audience. There's always questions. And they don't have the luxury of WWE, who they who, who all these podcasts, all these YouTubers, all these websites, that that's their first and foremost priority is covering WWE. So if you're watching something and it's unclear, you have a lot of people who go behind the scenes and get those answers and then report them. And now you're connecting with the products, but because impact doesn't have that, they have those moments where you're giving us information on the television, but we don't really know what you're, where you're saying, like, are you saying this guy's a contracted wrestler? Is he a part of the Daisy hits God? What is he? We don't know, but it's cool to see him there. And they're saying, Hey, he's, he's got what you want. He's a, contracted wrestler, but he's obviously still training. So when I interviewed Rohit Raju last year, he talked about Bupinder saying, said he's got a great look, but that he was, you know, a little green still. And that makes some sense. Like he, he is part of the impact roster, but we're still working with him. We're still, we're still trying to get him up to snuff. And Aiden Prince is also there as a trainer. And to go back to what I said, there were some issues. There were some safety issues in this episode with Bupinder Singh taking a spear. And I think one of the Khan brothers got injured by an elbow as well. So Scott talks about the mental effect. And these are the kind of things that when they peel back the curtain, we we get some insight on. He talks about the mental effect. How will this affect? Because I think Shogun was the one who speared Bupinder. How will he bounce back? How will it mentally affect him going forward? Is he going to be afraid to injure his opponent again? Or is he going to go full steam? And it's almost like the same mindset of a an athlete who maybe uh, you know suffered an ACL injury or something like that. And then when they come back, the confidence is not necessarily there to put the same type of intensity forward because you're afraid to get hurt again. So is that how it is mentally when you hurt somebody else, are you afraid going forward? Am I going to hurt this guy again? Am I going to hurt somebody if I do this same move? The next episode kicks off with Scott Moore kind of saying the same stuff, that there was some guys being sloppy, some guy forgetting the basics, and issues with injuries. Also, there was a match, you know, because they're, they're paired up together and they have matches, and Clayton Gaines was taking on Akbar Ali and from what they were communicating to us uh, Clayton Gaines 
was trying to get his shit in and not allowing Akbar to get his in. So there was a point in the match where it was supposed to transaction transition into Akbar getting his stuff in and getting his his shine for the match, you know? And apparently Clayton Gaines did something to where he overstepped that and he looked like the big star in the match. Akbar confronted him afterwards and Clayton Gaines Clayton Gaines so I'm I'm trying to get my shit in. So that that takes us, you know, I keep talking about peeling back the curtain. It takes us to the competitive aspect of wrestling to where, you know, hey, these guys, you know, even though they're dance partners, so to speak, you know, there are guys who say, no, I'm I'm going to stand out. I'm going to be the guy. So in these early episodes, Clayton Gaines and Tony Gunn, Tony, Tony Gunn seem to be the, I don't know if I want to call them the problem childs, the prob- problem childs, the problem children, but they're the ones right now who are standing out where there's issues going on with them. Does that mean they're going to lose the competition? I mean, sometimes, um, you know, I don't know how it is in a lot of your workplaces, but for me in military life, you know, we might see someone come in and they're just, uh, just a bag of shit when they get there, the bag of ass and they just can't get right. And they're the ones who are causing problems, but throughout the years, the, you know, they, they take those lessons and they become, you know, hot shit. They become high speed. They become good troops. So, and, and you don't see it coming sometimes. So right now we're seeing these two guys who are, who are the ones standing out as almost causing problems, but they're two of the most promising guys, in my opinion. They're, they're two guys who, if you were just looking at the, at these guys before the competition start, you say, Hey, those are two guys that have a, you know, legit chance to win this thing. They give us a match of Shogun versus Maximus Khan, or they're showing clips. I should say Shogun. He's, he looks a little sloppy to me. He's one of the, the sloppier guys. He uses the, you know, the silencer move that Sienna used to use. And I think it works better with a guy. I don't think uh, women can move can pull that w- move off as well. But he used that move, and he's talking with Aiden Prince. Remember, he's one of the trainers here. Talking with Aiden Prince, and he's talking to him about getting in his head and being being timid. Because, as I said earlier, he injured Bupinder Singh, and Scott Demore was talking about the mental effect. You know, the mental effect of all that. And then we get into Tony Gunn spitting in the ring and clearly he didn't do this to disrespect anybody uh, but he, he spit in the ring and in the wrestling environment especially an environment like this you have now disrespected the sacred ring you have disrespected the trainer so when he was approached by Aiden Prince about it you know very uh, very egotistical very just unapologetic, you know. He's just like I don't, I don't care. I'm doing, I'm gonna do what I do, and uh, it didn't really seem like Aiden Prince had control of the situation, you know, being the being the trainer in that case. And then is the part of the show that is so worth watching. I watched this a second time. I watched it with my girlfriend, where Johnny Bravo lines everybody up, and it says it's. You'll put your hands behind your back. You'll stare at the ceiling. You will speak when spoken to. And it's awesome seeing this side of him. That's why I can't wait to talk with him on the podcast. Been wanting to get Bravo on, but I wanted to wait for the right opportunity. And this is, now that gut check is going on, this is the right opportunity. But this is the part of the show. Man, he is laying into these dudes. He says, come to his attention that... Tony Gunn spit in the ring. He says, I just want a yes or no answer. Did you? Yes, he did. And then he brings up Tony Gunn's social media. He brings up, a, he shows an Instagram post where Tony Gunn's getting himself over. He's got the impact logo in the background. Hey, competing for this, the gun show competing for this opportunity at an impact contract. So, you know, Johnny Bravo's pretty much coming at him like, wow, you know, that's awesome of you taking advantage, you know, advantage of the situation to get yourself over on social media, but you're here, you're spitting in the ring. And then he asks, well, who took the picture? No one gave you guys permission to take pictures. 
and he goes one by one. Even Bupinder Singh is on the line. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing there as far as you know being in trouble. But so who took the picture? And Tony Gunn said someone took the picture. He just doesn't remember who. And he asked everybody. He came across, I think it was Clayton Gaines. He said, I know you didn't take it because you wouldn't. You know, I, I don't remember exactly what he was saying, but I know you didn't take it because you're basically saying your ego's too big to, you know, hook somebody else up like that. So he's yelling at him. It's very militant. And he says, you're about to be the most hated guy here. He gets everybody out of the ring. And I don't remember. He had him doing 500 and might have been squats. But he had them. And I've seen that in the military too. As a matter of fact, early in my career, I was at a training exercise and we were supposed to turn in all our ammunition. I forgot to turn mine in and it was all in my backpack, but I was a machine gunner when I was young, uh, when I was in my early twenties. So the rounds for that was a large belt of hundred, 200 rounds. And the belt was kind of sticking out of my backpack. And one of these instructors just walks up, opens my backpack and you just see all these rounds. And he told me that something very similar. Um, you, your team is going to pay for it, but not you. And you know, here I am. I'm 20, 21, and I'm watching my whole squad do flutter kicks, and they're screaming and they're hurting because they had to do like a hundred of them or something like that. And I stood there and I watched them, and um, <laughs> it, uh, it 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 messes with you, you know. Uh, it was very emotional for me because I saw my teammates hurting and it was because of my mistake. So he, he did something very similar to that. And so I thought it was cool seeing it just because I could, I could relate to it so much. So he, he rips in a Tony gun and tells Tony gun, you know, if you didn't carpool here, basically from Kentucky with a few other dudes, you'd be gone. I'm not going to punish a couple other people who actually have a oppor- actually have a chance to win this thing. <laughs> you know, he's basically talking him da- talking down to him, saying, "There's no no chance you're going to win this thing." And he keeps him home. I mean, he keeps him there instead of sending him home. And then he has to go apologize to Scott Moore. And you know, he he just basically said, "I wasn't. I meant no disrespect. It was just kind of part of the match." You know, like it was, it was just part of the persona he was trying to put on during the match. So it definitely wasn't done uh, out of disrespect. But at the same time, sometimes the people you beat up the most and you expect, you know, get in the most is because that's the one you expect the most from. So don't don't be surprised if Tony Gunn actually comes out and wins this thing. So. Um, at the very end of this ep- this episode, Scott Moore is doing his outtakes, and he said that Akbar is gone. He's been cut. We don't know why. So I think the third episode might be up today because I'm recording this on a Wednesday. Let's see if we get any insight into that. If not, when Johnny Bravo comes on the podcast, we will get that insight. We will get to the bottom of it and find out what's going on. But from what we saw on the television, he seemed like he was doing what he had to do. He actually got hurt at one point. But we didn't. We don't know if, you know, if you if you sit here yelling at Tony Gunn and all this stuff, and you're keeping him, but then you're getting rid of this guy. What did he do? One has to wonder. So I will be back soon. Uh, this was a little bit of a different podcast for me. So if I delivered it in a way that was dry and boring, <laughs> you know, I apologize. I haven't had to review anything like this before, but definitely check out Gut Check, and I will be. Uh, next next couple episodes of the I don't know how many they're doing exactly but you know when they do episode three and episode four I will be back to talk about those episodes so thanks for hanging with your boy BQ and I'm out peace